What's up party people? Welcome back to another video which apparently killed the radio star. Hmm. It's a couple of days after Christmas and it is almost 70 degrees Fahrenheit today. So odd. But anyhow, hope everybody had a Merry Christmas or whatever it is you celebrate. Uh, I've been riding my dirt jumper now for about 20 plus hours and I noticed it needs a little bit of tension so we're gonna head over we're gonna take the wheels off um, we're gonna look at the tensioner and the slop on the chain and also make sure the wheels are actually true and that the rear wheel is sitting in between the chain stays um, uh, straight and right now that's not necessarily the case so all right let's get to it all right I'm gonna true the, the rear wheel before I actually uh, do anything with a chain tensioner. All right, um, let's uh, let's true our front wheel first. Um, this is an interesting fork. It's a Manitou Circus, and I believe this is the expert model. Uh, it has a 20 millimeter axle and uh, 110 millimeter spacing, which is boost spacing in the mountain bike world. Um, so if you go look at uh, Rock Shocks or Fox 831 or the Rock Shocks Pike DJ fork, they all have a uh, smaller axle. So um, it's an interesting setup because if I were to change forks, I'd probably have to change hubs too. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen these pinch bolts on both sides of the wheel here. Then we'll take our uh, retaining, our axle retaining nut out and then we should be able to slide our our axle out and we'll put the wheel on a truant stand all right so these are just four millimeters or some and we'll do this side as well all right so those are loose and so now i'm going to take our retaining nut off which is going to be a number Six. Just loosen that. Make sure you don't use lose the uh, the metal washer there. And our axle should slip out of the bike like so. And so there's our uh, 20 millimeter axle. There's our hub. And usually why I take these off, I usually try to take a picture of any writing that's on the hub just so um, we buy, don't, don't lose the end caps. Um, so this is a, a formula hub. You can tell from the, the insignia on it. See the F there. Um, doesn't have much other writing on it. So it's probably made for uh, bike manufacturers as OEM. So let's go put her in a true insane. Alright, you guys have seen me do this before, so I'm not going to record all of it, but I've got my uh, through axle adapter in here. Alright, I don't have a 20 millimeter axle adapter here, but I just use these cone in the inside this time and let, let the hub rest on this, the center of those to get the, the wheel centered up. So that's the way I'm going to use this. Give her a spin. Actually not bad. Perfectly straight. All right, let's take this one off and we'll put the rear one on. All right. 
so we got our 15 millimeter wrench give that a quick loosen let's remove our nuts and I'm just going to slide these chain tensioners right off the axle like such and I'll do the same for the other side and now we can move our wheel all the way to the front and remove our chain from the sprocket there we go Drop it like that and just slide our wheel out now. Talk a little bit about this a little later, but if you're new to uh, to dirt jumpers and single speed, um, you need something to be able to tension the chain up because you don't have a derailleur. So um, these little bad babies work just like they do on like motorcycles. Um, it allows you to turn this piece to actually either pull the wheel back to tighten the chain or push the wheel forward in order to loosen the chain and what has happened is it probably wasn't tight or they probably didn't center it up when they uh, put this together from the factory and the wheel uh, is actually sitting between the chain stays just a little bit crooked so once we get the the wheel trued up we'll come back and we'll adjust these to make sure that our wheel track straight between the chain and the seat stays. All right, let's do it. It's actually a Novatech, and uh, let's see if it has a part number on it. It does. So it's a D256SBT. So um, I'll, I'll at least have this recorded on video now, and I'll go look up this hub. Um, here's our a single speed adapter there. Um, so if I ever want to replace these with something else, I'll know exactly what the spacing uh, and the axle size is from the uh, manufacturer. So let's put it in the stand and uh, true it up. This should be able to just sit in there. Tighten this up to it just scrubs. So as I expected the rear wheel is actually a little bit worse than the, uh, the front wheel and uh, it probably also had something to do with it looking like it was sitting in the chain stays a bit crooked too. So um, I think once we fix both of these things, we'll be good to go. So I'm going to work on this and chew it up just a little bit. So we're, we got two spots we need to work on. This spot. Need to pull the wheel over this way. So it starts around the valve stem and it goes about one, two, three, four spokes. So we'll just tighten the four spokes on this side. Very small increment. One. Almost perfect. Right there by the valve stem. Perfect. 
Perfect. All right. And then we'll center up our rear wheel. Now it's just the reverse process. Let's get our front wheel. There we go. Got our axle in. And uh, now 30 to 40 inch pounds of torque for to replace our uh, actually written right there on the end of the cap inch pounds. So we'll go somewhere in between. How about that? 35, 36. And let's tighten our pitch bolts down. Six newton meters. All right, there's our front wheel. Let's go do our rear wheel. So, if you're curious uh, about how the pinch bolts work on the uh, on the Manitou's, you'll notice just under here. There's like a little. Uh, yeah, hexagonal holder there that those pinch bolts thread into and it just pulls the the shop around the axle. Let's put our rear wheel back on and uh, I'm going to properly tension our chain. Put the wheel centered inside of the actual uh, bike. So I'm just going to throw the chain on. Sprocket here real quick. Slide this into the guides here and put our tensioners back on. All right, now we put our tensioners in, which will get us back to the place where we started before we took the wheel off. Do that on both sides. All right, now we just need to center the wheel up. And I don't use a scientific method, just visual usually. So let's take a look. The one thing too is, is that I looked in the uh, Common Style website and I think it's probably the, the case for most chains, but they want a centimeter of play. So if the normal chain line is sitting here, then you should be able to pick the chain up about a centimeter. So it's a little bit too loose there, but we'll fix that. And I'm going to do that by just spinning the tensioner and uh, try to keep these at an equal amount. All right, now that we have about equal distance. So usually what I just do is I just uh, put my finger, I'll just stick my finger in between the chain stay and the tire. The chain stay might not completely be straight either, so, but both fingers fit in the, the same amount there. All right, so we do that. Now let's tighten our axle nuts. Spin and we're still about equal distance. So let's take her down and see what she looks like. That'll do it for this video. 
Got everything, uh, got the wheels all trued up, and we have the chains, chain tensioned to about a centimeter of place. I am running out of tensioner room, so I'm gonna either need to take a link out or get a half link for the chain in the future. But yeah, we're good to go. Ready to ride. All right guys, if this is the first time to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel tremendously if you do that. So take time out to go do that just now. Come back, give me a big thumbs up if you like the content, share the link with your friends, click the bell for post notifications, and uh, you guys know what to do. Until next time, skill up and ride.